For quite some time now, I've been getting requests about image upscalers. Do I know anything about them? Which one am I using? Which one do I love the most? And to be honest, I've checked a few tools in the past few months and I didn't really like them. Some of them actually came out pixelated. I uploaded an image that is 4000 by 4000 pixels on 300 DPI and it basically downloaded me the same pixel size in less DPI. And a few minutes ago, I found this image upscaler, Big JPG. And I think it's pretty good, so I decided to hop on in and make a video. And you can only see my screen and not me because I just woke up and I didn't do my makeup and I thought the screen part is more important. I'm just gonna dive into this by selecting an image. There is nothing that I need to download to my computer. I'm just gonna select an image. And this is an image generated by Lexica AI. There was a full tutorial about Lexica AI and how I use it of a cute, smart kawaii. Cow. Now, most image upscalers do really well with vector style images. So this image should be perfect for this upscaler. Current size of this image is 1664 by 23 and four pixels, and it weighs 235 kilobytes, and we're just gonna start. The minute we wanna start, it's gonna ask you if it's a photo or an artwork. This is an artwork, not a photo. I'm gonna show you also the same thing with photos. And with the free version of Big JPG, I can upscale it twice the size, four times the size, and if I get an upgrade, I can enlarge it into a pretty huge size. We're gonna go with four now because I have the free plan. I'm still looking into if I wanna use this tool. I'm gonna choose a high noise reduction. I don't think I need much noise reduction. Again, this is some kind of vector style image, and then I'm gonna click OK. This procedure is now completed, and while you did see this happen instantly because of video editing, it actually took literally three and a half minutes. Let's download this image that now weighs 1.95 mega as opposed to 235 kilo. And now we have an image that is 6,656 pixels by 9,216. I wanna open both of these images right in front of you, fit them into the screen. And what I'm gonna do now is zoom into them to show you the differences. So I'm gonna zoom into this one and zoom in a bit more. And then I'm going to choose this one and zoom in again. You can see at this point that this image is pixelated and this one isn't. So it was enlarged. And if I have to look at the data of this image, this image is still 72 dpi. For those of you who are worried that 72 dpi is bad because you've heard that 300 dpi is the only thing that you're going to need, well, 72 dpi is quite fine because the pixel because the pixel size is large enough and I'm going to show you. But before I show you, I'm going to put in another image upscaler in the meantime to run in the background, and this time it's going to be for a photo. Now, I have this photo. Why am I duplicating it? I have this photo that I took in Bansko here. It's really beautiful this time of year. And if I try to upload this photo, it's not gonna allow me to upload it because I can only upload photos that are up to 3000 pixels. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna manually change it. This is a photo that I took with my phone, which is the iPhone 12 mini that has an amazing camera. And I'm gonna change the height to 3000, basically limiting the photo to 3000 and close, and now I can upload it. I'm gonna start this off, selecting photo this time, and clicking OK, and it's gonna do its thinking while I'm gonna show you how much the original photo, the smart cow illustration, actually made a difference. So I've uploaded the original size illustration of this cow onto Redbubble, and you can see that it cannot be activated on most products. But let's see what happens when I upload the newer version, the one that is much bigger. As you can see, we can already see a difference with the t-shirts. We can see that these t-shirts are fully printed. These are not. And if I scroll all the way down to something like the duvet comforters and shower curtain, I'm still missing a little bit on the sides here, as you can see. Not as much as I'm missing with this one. But because my background is basically a single color, what I can do here is to choose some kind of pattern and place it like this. So it's not gonna make that much of a difference because my background is of a single color. But yeah, I can upload it to much more products. It's gonna be stretched out much better. Let's have a look at the notebooks. 
even with the notebooks, you can see the difference with the original photo barely fitting in. And the new photo that we have is on 27%. And I can pretty much make it like this if I want to. Or like this. I also wanted to show you how it looks on Printful, for example, because this is where we have transparency when it comes to DPI control and how this is going to be printed. So I went into Printful and I chose a framed print that is 24 inches by 36 inches with the original image that I had and it's 88 DPI. I'm not even stretched all the way through. If I have to stretch it all the way through, it's 63 DPI. Horrible. Let's upload the newer file the upscaled version. And now you can see that it covers the entire space again of 24 inch by 36 inch print with 256 dpi, which is considered very good quality. Let's head on back just for a second to our big JPG. It is still thinking about our image upscaling because image upscaling works a little bit different. While it's thinking, I'm going to show you a different example of something that I've done before making this tutorial of actually checking it out with this cute kitten also from lexica let's minimize it to the screen size and the upscaled version let's put it side by side this one is the upscaled version i'm going to go here i'm going to zoom in on the eye can see that it's pixelated. I'm going to go in here and again zoom in on the eye and you can see that the resolution is completely different. This is much clearer than this version. One other thing that I did which is kind of cute and this is something that you can do on a Mac is delete the background of this cute cat. I've already done it with my Mac. I'm going to show you how to do it again. I'm going to copy paste this. Grab my cute kitten go here. Anyone who has a Mac, this part is for you. I'm going to choose the magic brush. Select lightly. See, it also selected a piece of the fur. Escape, I don't want that. Select very lightly and hit the delete button, which will convert this to PNG. And this is how you create your clip art. I'm going to have to also clear up the spaces. You can see we have many, many like fractals around here floating around. I'm going to clear them up. And this is how you can create very, very big clip art, which you either sell as clip art or you add it on to a t shirt design or a shower curtain design or whatever design you want. Let's see if our photo finished. It's completed, and I can download it and show you what it does with photos because from what I tested, it has a little bit of a difference with photos. It kind of feels like it's taking the photo that I took and turning it into some kind of oil painting. So the original size was 2.98 mega and now it's 18 mega. And instead of this photo being 2250 by 3000, it's now 9000 by 12000, which is amazing. This is an amazing tool even for photographers. And I'm going to open both of these side by side to show you a little bit of the difference. So this is the original one that we have. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to try and zoom in the same way here. The difference that it did in this case with the case of a photo is not to give me just a more clear look. It's just to give me a larger size. So this left image is larger than this one even though again this one is very pixelated this one is not as pixelated but it kind of looks like it's an oil painting instead of me actually seeing the visuals of an image because this is an image with a lot of details in it as i said before this upscaler works best with illustrations with some kind of clip art with some kind of vector style images but we've seen how it affects literally the size. For example, with the pillows and the totes bags, the original photo barely fitting in. And if I go here, I'm only using 33% of this photo in order to fit a pillow and a tote bag. So that is a very big success for me, especially seeing the difference between this cannot be printed this big and this can be printed this big. Now, 
When it comes to pricing, because I know you've all been wondering, let's have a look at their pricing plans. I'm using the free plan, and as you can see, I used two of it this month. A little bit of a tip, if you don't sign in, you can pretty much use it on your browser. And it doesn't really limit you because it doesn't count, but it also doesn't create any kind of history, and it's a little bit more bumpy. So now I'm on the current free plan, and I've used it twice this month, and I can use it up to 20 times a month with the speed being slow. Now, if I wanna pay for 12 months, it will be $22. It's not $22 per month for 12 months. It's $22 for the entire year. You pay a one-time payment. You can upload much larger images to start with. Here you can upload up to five mega. Here you can upload up to 50. And you can increase the size by 16, which is insane. I think it will be good if you're doing like Society6 or if you're selling shower curtains or beddings and stuff like that. And you can upscale 2,000 images per month. You can also just pay $12 for a full six months period. Again, not 12 per month for six months, but 12 for six months with 1,000 image upscales per month, one-time payment. You get a better speed in all of them and you also get to increase your photos 16 times more. Also, if you've tested out this and you think that this is really cool and you currently have 200 images or 300 images that you want to upscale, just go with the basic plan for two months for $6, which could be actually enough. I personally don't see the value in having a thousand upscales per month because I see more value in marketing than creating. So I would probably go with something like this during my time off and just enjoy upscaling a bunch of photos that I took in Bansko. I really want to have some of my photos here enlarged and placed on bigger canvases. I can definitely see the potential in something like this, whether you purchased a piece of clip art and you want to make it bigger, whether you're doing something with an AI art generator, or again, for your own photos as a photographer, if you want to make sure that they can be printed larger. They do have this oil painting effect. Obviously for free, it's completely worth it because 20 photos a month to be upscaled for completely free. It's a really good thing. For those of you who are wondering, I'm not an affiliate of Big JPEG. That's the name of this company, bigjpeg.com. I just discovered it this morning and I thought it was pretty cool. I'm gonna leave two links on the screen right now that might help you out with understanding the whole thing with the DPI. It was basically a video where I ordered a bunch of products that are less than 300 DPI to show you that their quality is good and the original image source was also less than 300 DPI, how they print it in real life, along with another video that's gonna be on the screen right now of how I personally like to use Lexica AI, which is my favorite tool. With that being said, that was it for me for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new. Hit the like button if you like this video. And as usual, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!